In a general strength or hypertrophy training program, there are many different ways we can categorize the exercises used. One of these ways is to categorize exercises as either free weight, which includes barbells and dumbbells, or machine based. Some consider free weights to be superior, mainly due to the increased stabilization requirements. It's theorized the greater instability with free weights can result in greater muscle fiber recruitment. On the other hand, a stable environment with machines could allow an individual to focus more on the intended muscles. Additionally, some machines are designed to match the strength curve of an exercise, meaning they challenge the working muscle, or muscles, to a high degree throughout the range of motion. So, which is best for hypertrophy, free weights or machines? This is what a recent study by Schwanbeck and colleagues assessed. 15 men and 21 women with an average of two years training experience were randomly assigned to either a free weight group or a machine group. For both groups, training consisted of cycling two days of training with one day of rest. On day one, both groups trained the chest, back and triceps. On day two, both groups trained the legs, shoulders and biceps. This whole cycle was repeated for eight weeks. The free weight group, on day one for the chest, back and triceps, performed the flat barbell bench press, incline barbell bench press, bent over barbell rows, chin ups, tricep skull crushes, and dumbbell kickbacks. The machine group, on day one for the chest, back and triceps, performed the Smith machine bench press, Smith machine incline bench press, machine seated row, lat pull down, machine triceps press down, and rope press down. The free weight group, on day two for the legs, shoulders and biceps, performed the barbell back squat, straight leg deadlift, lunge, single leg calf raise, dumbbell shoulder press, dumbbell lateral raise, easy bar curl and preacher curl. The machine group, on day two for the legs, shoulders and biceps, performed the Smith machine squat, leg extension, seated hamstring curl, machine calf raise, machine shoulder press, machine lateral raise, machine biceps curl, and machine's preacher curl. For the first three weeks, both groups performed each exercise with four sets of eight to 10 reps to failure, with one minute of rest between sets. For the next three weeks, both groups performed each exercise with four sets of six to eight reps to failure, with one minute and 30 seconds of rest between sets. For the last two weeks, both groups performed each exercise with three sets of four to five reps to failure, with two minutes of rest between sets. Throughout these three phases, if subjects were able to, load was increased on any of their exercises. Ultrasound was used to measure thickness of the quadriceps and biceps before and after the training period for both groups. For strength, one rep max on the barbell bench press and one rep max on the Smith machine bench press was assessed before and after the training period for both groups. Additionally, a 6 to 10 rep max on the barbell back squat and a 6 to 10 rep max on the Smith machine squat were measured for both groups before and after the training period. These 6 to 10 rep maxes were used to predict 1 rep max values for both their exercises. Starting off with the strength results, both groups actually experienced similar increases in barbell bench press 1 rep max. For one rep max on the Smith machine bench press, the machine group experienced greater gains compared to the free weight group. For predicted barbell back squat one rep maxes, both groups experienced statistically similar increases. However, it's very clear to see that percentage wise, the free weight group experienced greater gains. For predicted Smith machine squat one rep maxes, both groups experienced similar increases. According to the principle of specificity, we would expect the free weight group to experience greater gains for the barbell exercises, while we would expect the machine group to experience greater gains for the Smith machine exercises. This was true for the Smith machine bench press and barbell back squat, but intriguingly, this did not seem to apply to the barbell bench press or Smith machine squat. Nevertheless, this study did only last eight weeks. In the long run, it's very likely that if your aim is to maximize strength on the barbell bench press or Smith machine squat, performing that particular exercise frequently will be necessary. Moving on to the hypertrophy results, both groups experienced similar increases in biceps thickness and quadriceps thickness. 
In other words, both free weights and machines appear to produce similar hypertrophy. Now, of course, it would have been more informative if the researchers could have assessed hypertrophy of a few other muscle groups, as both groups did train the majority of their body. But regardless, when looking at the mechanisms of muscle growth, reasoning does seem to suggest that both free weights and machines can produce similar hypertrophy. Mechanical tension is the best categorised driver of muscle growth currently. Mechanical tension consists of active tension and passive tension. Active tension is the force generated by the contractile units of a muscle. If we were to look at the layers of a muscle, within muscle fibres are found myofibrils. Sarcomeres, which are the contractile units of muscle, are located here. Force is generated when something called the myosin head extends from the myosin filament and pulls the actin filament towards the M line, shortening the length of the sarcomere. The force generated from this is partly transmitted longitudinally, but mainly laterally to the extracellular matrix, where these forces end up pulling on the tendon, causing muscle contraction. It's believed mechanosensors detect this force and initiate a signaling cascade that ultimately results in muscle hypertrophy. Now, here's the thing, regardless of what's used, a barbell, dumbbell, machine, or even body weight, taking a movement close to failure with a load between 30% and 85% one rep max will result in sufficiently high amounts of active tension overall for a sustained period. So, although it's possible free weights recruit more fibers early on in a set, due to the instability, implying greater overall active tension early on, as reps approach failure, this likely would not matter. With regards to passive tension, this is the force generated when elastic elements within muscles are stretched. When components within the extracellular matrix and a molecule called titan found within a sarcomere are stretched, passive force is generated. Similar to active tension, mechanosensors are believed to detect this force and subsequently initiate a signaling cascade that ultimately results in muscle hypertrophy. Recent evidence suggests that titan may alter its function during eccentric contractions, such that it produces force throughout this phase. Again, barbells, dumbbells, machines and even bodyweight training typically include an eccentric phase. Additionally, depending on the working sarcomere lengths of a particular muscle, passive tension from titan but also the extracellular matrix occurs when contracting at long muscle lengths. For instance, the sarcomeres within the vastus muscles of the quadriceps appear to be stretched at long muscle lengths, meaning passive tension can effectively occur here. Bear in mind this isn't the case for every single muscle. The barbell back squat can work the quadriceps at long muscle lengths, but so can the smith machine squat, or another machine like the hack squat. To return to the overall point, both free weights and machines have the ability to produce high amounts of mechanical tension, likely explaining a big part of why they can produce similar hypertrophy.